Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? I kind of almost like blanked on what the title of our show was. Oh my god, that's not good. <laughs> I'm really tired. You guys, we've made it to episode 112 and I just, I feel like it, it goes in twos. I feel like I black out for one of them and then I don't remember. Like I feel like we just were on 110. Well, we were. Well, I mean, I forgot about 111 already. We did not intentionally match, by the way. We're kind of matching low key, high key. Wearing tan shirts. These. What's, I don't like usually wear tan. I feel like that. I don't either. I just bought it because it was really soft. This is all I had. That was clean. You'll notice that a lot of my shirts are from um, Target. It's because I'll go to Target for something else and then I'll like pass by it and I'm like, mm. oh my God, now's the perfect time to ask the question. Where do you guys buy like the best, just like either cozy sweatshirts or like graphic tees? I feel like that's all we wear and I'm out. Like I have reworn every outfit like five times. Times, so I need to purchase That's new ones. That's why I always buy new ones at Target because I'm like, that one will work. Sounds good. Yeah, I don't want to get off of places like Shein for obvious reasons, but I feel like they make it so easy to just get like an array of shit. So like what are other websites that are not like Shein, but like that have an array? Because usually it's Airy from American Eagle. Oh my God. It's like comfy, cozy, everything. Oh, okay. See, that might work. That's what I want. And they fit really well. They're like really like good quality. And usually they might originally be a little pricier, but they are always on sale. Like I've never been to the website and they're not on sale. I personally love American Eagle. I feel like their clothes are such good quality. Like you will have them for years. So it's kind of worth it. Yeah, like <laughs> this is not sponsored. No, um, sorry. I got like uh, several I would love sweatshirts that. and I'm mad because one of them, I didn't realize that I had a red shirt that I put in the laundry. Girl, adulting 101, use color sheets in every load. I mean, I don't even like have, like I don't wear red shirts. It was like, it snuck in It there. doesn't it matter. I like, now use color sheets with every Every single load because even if it's not a red shirt something always like tints something like it's like a dull gray your clothes eventually all turn into because I don't separate colors and whites I don't either usually but also I don't really have that many colors it's all pretty much neutrals I actually don't have enough whites oh. to put in so I have mostly color well this was like a light tan I guess it was tan but it was like a cream color uh yeah kind of and it so now there's just like pink stains on it but also these sweatpants that I'm wearing that are like kind of teddy bear they're mm -hmm. from Mary, and I have a matching sweatshirt that's really comfy. I mean, if you guys are ever wondering what I'm wearing down below, it is always pajama pants or leggings. So that doesn't really matter. Do you know what? But the top, I would like. Oh, are you going to comment on the peg leg thing? What? The comment we got that someone said, I've been following Jesse for 10 years and I have never seen her legs. No, but I forgot I was like, about that. Wait a second. That's so funny. They're like, does she have a peg leg? Nobody knows. I'm like, I have stood up before. Do you remember when I did the, I don't know if you guys are familiar, Photoshop has like a AI generator thing so you can expand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Honestly, it's not great. Sometimes it's good. And then other times I'm like, what the fuck is that? For example, I like just as just an experiment, I tried to expand our like just normal shot. And do you remember it put like, it gave you just like giant legs. <laughs> I'll see if I can find it. I vaguely remember, but if not, you're gonna have to recreate it. It was so if you funny. Don't find it. it was like literally like she had like, each leg was like five feet long. Honestly, that's not that far off from reality. I've got big old legs. I'm a very tall girly. If you she didn't know, really I'm 5'10". Tall. Yeah, actually I'm curious now because whenever I got my back like, adjusted my posture changed I definitely grew like two inches so we might be similar you're not short though no and I feel like I all. that people think I'm short and then they see me in person they're like oh yeah you're no, like, like a me schmedium yeah you're like a schmedium large <laughs> I'm a schmedium. and also back to the cozy clothes for a second do you feel like it's like absolutely impossible to ever feel like small girl I don't know because I do get my sweaters like 2xl because I want to feel like I am just a little goyle Same, but I'm but giant exactly <laughs> Like, damn it. Exactly. I also have big feet. I'm like a nine and a half to 10. And this is, oh, what's so funny is like, we don't have a lot of time to film today. We're gonna have to film in two batches. But anyway, no, I am not. gonna go off yeah. on a tangent really quick. That's fine. Because when I first started dating Nassim, we went, do you know where they do like ice skating downtown in LA? Like they have like a little ring. Yeah. Okay, well we went there and it was like right when we started dating and I had to go to the bathroom. And so he was gonna get my ice skates. Like he wanted to get my ice skates, but I didn't want him to know how big my feet were. Cause I apparently thought he wouldn't look down. I mean, I don't even have like giant, I have nice feet. Okay. I think I have like a, a really good rating on wiki feet. So I do too. they're like nice. Like my toes are all cute and stuff. Like it's fine, but they were big and I was insecure about it. And so I will never forget as I was going to the bathroom, he was like, Oh, what size do you need the skates in? And I pretended I couldn't hear him. And I walked away and I never told him. He just kept <gasps> shouting at me. He's like, what uh, the shoes? Uh, what size I skates? Like, I literally was like, there's too many people here. I just don't know what you're saying. And oh, uh, I came God. back and I was like, Oh, sorry. You were calling for me. I'll just get my own shoes. 
it's a 10 to the lady I was like whispering. Really quick, uh, wiki feet. I haven't thought about that in a long time. Um, so I used to, oh my oh God. God. <laughs> I'm like traumatized even thinking about it. I like knew that WikiFeed existed, but I didn't. It's disturbing really, a little bit. I guess I didn't know that I was on yeah. it. It was terrifying. Yeah. Every time your feet have ever been on camera, it is there. <laughs> Which honestly is a lot because of Clever. We would do weird shit and I'd be like in a bathing suit oh, or something. Right, like, right, right, there right. was a lot. But the creepy part was that I used to, I'm actually really sad to think about that I don't have a bath anymore in this oh, new right. place, but I'm a big bath Oh, I have early. bath ones on there too. And mm -hmm. oh, I used to take like Instagram stories of like my feet in the bath. Big mistake. Oh <laughs> my God. No, it was literally every single one. I like didn't even know I had taken yeah. that many. And I was like, you haven't just taken them. It's like you know these? that like someone has pleasured themselves to that. And that is very interesting. I don't think I ever really like connected the dots that that was, yeah. uh, I went on it and I was like, Oh my God, never again. I'm oh, never same. posting I have a picture my ever again. from the internet. Like I will not give away my foot pics for free. They're too cute. Another side note about being tall. <laughs> I used to want to uh, look into surgeries where they would like be able to cut off some of my bones so I would be shorter when I was little. <laughs> I hated Okay, wait, being but tall. I was the opposite because I was 4'10 going into high school. When did you grow? Like one year of high school. It was very painful. Oh my God. <laughs> I hit puberty kind of late and it was like probably like right around when I got my period. It was when I was 16. Oh yeah. And like 15 to 16, I literally grew like over seven inches Yikes. in a year. And Ouch. now I'm like five, eight ish. Yeah. -ish. I'm glad I didn't chop my bones off. I am glad I kept them. I'm so happy to be a tall queen. Did you really think that that was a thing, that you, like an elective surgery you could do? Uh, I looked into it, but I was also like 13, girl. I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. Anyway, oh my God. Again, we have places to be, people to see. We gotta we gotta get on with this episode. Oh my God, yeah. Oh, wait, really quick. Before we do get on with this episode, I did want to do a quick little shout out. Uh, we're gonna try to be pushing a little bit more like to let people know we're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. Did you guys know that? You can also listen to us. Our main audience is obviously here on YouTube. We've got lots of assets flying in and out, but we're also on those like listening sites. So. If you guys want to give us a listen and a review, we'd greatly appreciate that because we want to be a real podcast. <laughs> I think we are a real podcast. <laughs> Did you know my mom just started listening? She had like never listened to a full episode before and she just started like three episodes ago. <laughs> Hi, Mama Marston. Or she's lying and she's not really listening, but we'll see. Oh Hi, my mom. God. Yeah. If you're listening to this for real, text Lily. And then if she doesn't text you, we know she's lying. There you go. Stay tuned for the results. And also stay tuned for the results of Lily's SpongeBob mac and cheese she never updated you guys with. And everybody bullies you every day because of it, because you just fly. I thought you were going to say of my Botox. I was like, you're not supposed to blow up my spot. But like, I'm, I'm getting Botox. That's why I have to leave later. <laughs> I love that for you. Guys, should I get lip filler? Vote in the comments below. Okay, we are in our plastic surgery era. Uh, she was wanting to ask you guys. Should I be Jennifer Coolidge? We yes need or no? to start. What are the topics? Okay, so we have Bretman Rock going on Fanita's podcast and telling the most unhinged, disturbing story. And people are just like, yes. And I'm very confused. Then we have Marissa Hughes versus Kite Baby, which this is a huge story exploding right now on TikTok that is quite like we're going to have a lot to say. I know I feel. nothing about. Yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Should I know who those people are? No, because you don't have a baby, which Kite Baby is a popular <laughs> baby company. And then Marissa uh, Hughes is just someone who worked for Kite Baby. So I don't think so. Then we have Daisy Marquez faking sickle cell anemia. Didn't have that in my 2024 bingo card. Literally the clips I have seen of this, I'm like, yeah, ma'am, what do you mean? So as always, up to you, Lily. Where do we begin? You lead us. Ooh, dealer's choice. Let's go with Bretman Rock. Let's just go in order. Okay, period. So Bretman Rock, honestly, the only way to explain this and like to preface this is he went on Fanita's, I think it's like Bottoms Up with Fanita podcast is what it's called. And she has a lot of guests. That's like her main thing. I don't think she does like solo episodes. So she does a lot of guest stuff and she jokes a lot with them. They have good times. They tell like really sexual stories or crazy shit. Like she's not PG at all. And to be honest, I really like Fanita. Like I still follow her even after the tart thing. And Bretman Rock recently was a guest on her podcast. And I guess they just thought they were, you know, just telling a fun little story on a podcast because they even reposted this. What we're about to watch is reposted to Fanita's like TikTok right now. With an interesting caption as well. Oh, But then yeah. also it's apparently in his book too. Oh my God, is it? Is that why she asked him about it's it? It's not like he like just like spilled the beans one day. Like he tells this story apparently. But also, it, so I met him once. Okay. Ironically, I think we cut it out, but that I mentioned last time, so many full circle moments mm -hmm. that I randomly was part of the Hairspray right. Live. They had like an influencer 
like platform thing. We like had to be on camera for some of it. I think it was Darren Chris was the one hosting it. And there was a shot that me and Bretman were on camera for like the TV broadcast my phone was in my pocket and literally it just started going off non-stop because apparently a lot of people were watching hairspray live oh i remember we met him and he was super super nice he was like in from hawaii just for that brand deal and i always thought he was pretty unproblematic but is he problematic okay here's the thing about bretman rock he has had very i mean in comparison to the rest of the beauty community minor problematic not moments yeah. he's not at all a jacqueline hill or michaela nagara anything of the sort in fact when michaela nagara came out with the whole like lash gate thing he also promoted the same mascara and people used his as like an exemplary people were just saying like he knows how to promote it this is how you should do it and he's always been that for the beauty community he i feel like as far as like influencers go, he's not problematic. Usually no, but what the fuck is this that we're about to watch? I don't know. And that's why I was going to say like, I don't know, he's very like not an influencer. And I even remember when we met him, we were like, oh, like, do you like LA? Would you ever move here? And he's like, oh, no, yeah. absolutely not. Like he's very like, doesn't want to be part of the scene, wants to do his own thing. He doesn't feel not nearly as disconnected the... as the other beauty gurus immediately no, get the second, like a single dollar enters their pocket. So people love that about him. Let's just watch this because there's really Really, again, no way to preface this. Have you ever brought Martina up to your mom since the time she beat her, <laughs> beat the shit out of her? Oh yeah, Martina, by the way, is my mom's, oh, my dad's mistress? Ooh. Yeah, that was just the name that I gave her on the book. So what had happened was my, my mom called one day and she was like, oh, how's the maid? And I was like, oh, she's cute. Like my, the mom and oh, dad so, is always so the, kissing. Was the maid, was the maid like, just like a cover up? Yeah, okay. so my mom, my, my mom, my brother and my sister were all in, Hawaii mm -hmm. and my dad and I was in the Philippines because okay. he was like you gotta leave the middle child behind just in case you cheat on me yeah, yeah. and he hired this maid mm -hmm. who he told my mom was a lesbian mm -hmm. but she was not a lesbian yeah. um, and one day my mom called and she was like how's the maid and I was like she's lovely dad's always kissing her and they sleep together like they're always <laughs> they're actually massaging each other right now and I was like seven at the time uh, so was, yeah, I don't know, know what the fuck was like, I was saying snitching ass. I, was, I didn't know I was snitching yeah. but I'm glad I did yeah, yeah of course a week later my mom shows up I'm eating oatmeal Martina's cooking fish. I'm eating oatmeal at the table. She comes in. She grabs the pan, dumps it on her, boiling oil, dumps it on her, and it's all over her, like here, and her hands are like boiling. Like, literally, she's like, <gasps> and she, that's what yeah. she get. And the floor is oily, right? And my mom knocks her out, grabs her by the hair, and drags her right out of the house. And she was not done yet. And nobody stopped my mom because everyone like literally looked like they saw a ghost. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. She didn't tell anybody who she was coming in. She she, she popped she up. She pulled up. She pulled up on a bitch. And she dragged her about like 200 meters out in the neighbor. Like literally, and all the neighbors saw this all, whole thing happen. Mm -hmm. So if people ever thought I was making shit up in the book, ask my neighborhood, bitch. We all saw that whole thing happen. Like, And your mom beat her down in, in, in front of the community. Yeah. And in, our roads back home is like filled with like manure mm -hmm. like shit like glass and she she stood up like she literally looked like a new person <laughs> like i am uh, speechless when he says like no one stopped her because it was like they saw a ghost i'm like or was it because she was psychotic any plausible deniability i mean this happened so long ago i'm assuming if he was seven and now he's in his 20s and i don't think anything like is legally gonna happen to his mom but any plausible deniability of this being like just a story he's telling he just fucked it up and he's just like and if you don't believe me ask everyone in my fucking neighborhood oh my your god mom almost like murdered someone basically like he says later there's another clip that i saw where she was like basically she like scalped her like your mom gave her a facial reconstruction yeah. and she had a whole bundle on her hand like just and she was scalped because her hair was yes. raw like her skin was raw yeah and guess who my dad chose Oh, and my dad wouldn't show up in court. So my mom hired a hitman, bitch. Cocked him in the back of his head. Woke up in court. Who do you want? Me or her? Me or her? Me or her? And he, he beat Martina? Yeah. Oh, my God. And like beat the shit out of her in the street with the glass. And I'm not even her. joking. I didn't see this whole clip. Like I've been avoiding watching the entire thing until this moment. And... I think this is gonna be the thing that gets me to finally unfollow Fanita, not that she gives a fuck, but like, I just cannot deal with her response to this. She deserved it. Even if she knowingly did it, like even if she understood exactly what she was doing, 
she did not deserve that. That is insane. And also, uh, like, I mean, yeah, I get we can be mad at everyone. There's enough energy to go around, but that's too much energy. That would have been too much energy even if it was to him. It's fucked up and cheating is uh, horrendous. You cannot like boiling people. oil. When you understand and when you've seen so many people who have gotten burned in their lives, the treatments it's insane. to burns are the most oh insane God. shit you've ever seen in your life. They are scraping your skin. Like it is just oh my God. a nightmare. Oh my God. I mean, think of when you get a really bad sunburn times a fucking million. Yeah. Like that's so not an adequate response. Like, I don't care what they did. You don't do that. Like that's insane. And the fact that this post has 600, well, oh, that's kind of poetic, 666,000 likes and only 4,000 comments. We need to read some of the comments in yeah. a sec. But first, the caption from Fenina is, respect in all caps and then a shaking hands emoji. She did what needed to be done with a boxing glove. Are you, are you kidding? Fanina, I don't know if you understood what he said, but what he just said was not that his mom beat the shit out of her, which already would have been questionable. It would have been like, okay, where's that energy for him? Maybe He's the he one that totally let her, her in the yeah. house. You know what I mean? Like we had a whole fucking episode on Ariana Grande and how we think she's a homewrecker and horrible. But guess what? Ethan's fucking horrible too. I was gonna say, I know we just had that episode where we talked about like beating the guy up if he was going after a friend, but like nope. that is self-defense. Okay, okay, this is totally different. insane. Totally different. With that situation, it's like someone is hurting your friend. That is self-defense to help her and to also do whatever you needed to do. Pull his weenie into a balloon animal. I'm not, you know, that's just a suggestion. Do what you need to do to get him to stop. Yes. This is uncalled for assault. And borderline attempted murder. Yeah, and completely premeditated. She literally waited a week until she could get to the Philippines from Hawaii, did all of this without announcing it to anyone. This is insane psychopath shit. And why would you ever put this out there unless you just literally thought it was funny? Like, why else would and you say this story? The, like, no one seems to acknowledge the added factor that it was the dad's maid. He, oh, she worked for him too. That's so true. So it's like, then there's also a power imbalance going on where it's like, maybe- She felt weird I mean, and uncomfortable. And Maybe she didn't. Maybe, yeah. I, don't, I have no idea. The comments are so unhinged. Some of them are okay. They're like, whoa, jail? But other ones yeah. are like- Mom was standing on business. 42.8 thousand likes. Are you kidding? But there was a lot of people who were like, that's really shocking and not okay. Someone said, there's always so much energy for the home wrecker and none for the person who unlocked the door to the home. That's my thing. It's like, she has no commitment to you. She didn't marry you. She didn't have kids with you. Is it horrible if someone knowingly does that to you and like is going behind your back? Sure, like Ariana Grande. I think Ariana Grande, and especially in her new song, she goes like, why do you care whose dick I ride? Like shit like that, I'm like, ew, like, you're because gross. Because it was someone else's dick, but But okay, do I sure. think that Ariana Grande deserves Deserves to freaking have hot oil spread on her? Like, no. I don't think anyone does. Like, Nobody she, does. you shouldn't have done this to the dad either. Like, I'm just so confused why they are talking. Like, he's being so casual about it. And then Fenita is laughing. Well, that's the thing. I know Fenita specifically because I followed her for a while. She does like laugh at a lot of trauma and shit. Like she's gone through a lot. Her mom has passed away. She really has no family. Like she definitely relies on comedy when it comes to trauma. Like that's her MO. But, well, and I get whoa. laughing in like an awkward situation or maybe like in a dark, like making a dark joke or something, but no one is making a joke here. He's literally telling a story about how someone was like permanently disfigured yeah. because his mom beat the shit out of them after pouring hot oil on them, which would have permanently disfigured someone. Like it's insane. And then she's just like, ha ha, good one. I, yeah, no matter what, what Fanita usually does with trauma or like how she addresses it. Girl, this was fucking not it. This is your podcast. This, like, obviously we say this every time. When people say some crazy shit on a podcast, unless it's literally live, like you could have taken this out. Like this is so wild that he not only wrote this in his book, but then came onto this podcast and they're both like kikiing about it as if she just went and like slapped a woman in the face, which would have already been alarming, but that's not what we're talking about. You can tell though, like it's because he doesn't seem phased by it, which like that's a whole nother concern that it's like- Yeah, like um, have you talked to Someone what about else this? did you witness? It's just insane it is. to me that this was like a casual conversation between two people that no one thought it was like, maybe we keep that in the drafts. I understand like when you, and I feel like we've experienced this too in this podcast, it's like when you do a lot of episodes, sometimes things slip through the cracks, even though you're like trying to like, you know, reel it in and just like make sure you're this not being problematic. Not those things. I don't think this is that. I think this is something in the moment that you should have been like, Hmm, maybe not. But she liked it so much that she put it on her TikTok uh, for her podcast. So it's the podcast account and it's still there and it has a ton of attention. I mean, people are disturbed, but not that many. In the grand scheme of things, people are like, 
Ha ha ha. Hilarious. Oh my god. Literally the hashtags. One of them is comedy video and another is funny and relatable. I, call me crazy. I don't feel like this is particularly relatable. I definitely can't relate. Also, I'm just thinking about it. She did all of that based on the word of a seven-year-old. It's like, he could have been wrong. He could have seen a TV show that he was basing that off of. Like, you have no idea. You didn't confront the husband, that. anything. Walk straight in, oil. Like, what the fuck? And again, why aren't, like, not that she should have done it to the husband either, but it's like, why her? Why her? I edited Angelica's video about it, so it was probably there that I saw this, but I'm pretty sure someone said that they were still together. His mom like, and the I husband? I don't know if now, but like they stayed, no, opposite, the maid and the husband. What? I have so many questions. Like he, he stayed with the maid afterwards. Holy fuck. I mean, maybe that brought them closer together. Uh, ladies, if you're ever thinking about doing some crazy shit, just know that it's not gonna make him like you more. And it's definitely not going to make him be more loyal. And also don't try to murder people, just generally. Before we continue on any further, we do have a message from our sponsor, ZocDoc. If you guys watch this podcast, you already know who ZocDoc is. But in case you don't... <laughs> We're judging you, but ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. Which is great because then you don't have to call them, which is my biggest pet peeve, obviously, because I'm a millennial and I hate talking on the phone. You just go online and we're talking booking appointments with thousands of top rated patient reviewed doctors and specialists. And you can filter for specifically ones that take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. And one of my favorite things about ZocDoc is when you book through ZocDoc, you're looking at usually a 24 to 72 hour wait time, which is amazing because a lot of times if you call into doctor's offices, you're not gonna be seen for like three months and that's not ideal for anyone. No, it's super convenient because it literally shows you like the week schedule and it's just like has the slots and you can just click it, book, it's super easy. So if you wanna try out ZocDoc, just go to ZocDoc.com slash DWKT and download the ZocDoc app for free and you can find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash DWKT, ZocDoc.com slash DWKT. Thank you once again to ZocDoc for being an amazing sponsor of this podcast. We love you. But anyway, as weird as it is to just move on from that, we will move on to our next story, which is Marissa Hughes versus Kite Baby. Basically what happened is Marissa Hughes is not an influencer or anything. She's not someone that you probably know just by hearing her name. But the reason why we do know her name is because she was an employee of Kite Baby. And Kite Baby is best known for their like sleep sacks and like sleepers, like footy pajamas, but they're made out of bamboo. You know how like baby bamboo clothes are very popular? They're like a very soft fabric. Bamboo? Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's definitely like, I have gotten a few things that were bamboo and they are just the softest material that's ever touched your skin. So they're like marketed towards like kids with sensitive skin and all that shit, but they're expensive as fuck. We're talking like 45 Five dollars for one pajama for a child. I'm not gonna even bother asking questions. <laughs> Basically, they are a very, very popular baby company. And it started with this woman named Ying and she is the owner and it did start off small, but they have grown to be a huge company and they involve influencers in their campaigns. And it's a thing, right? Like they're a whole ass company. It's not a small business anymore. They have had brand trips with influencers to Aspen. And like what I find very weird about all of this is- Baby brand trips? Yes, baby brand trips. What the fuck does that even mean? It's like, okay, brand trips like, I understand. Cause yeah, let's get fucked up in Cabo. I don't care. Yeah, but bring your baby. That's what I'm strange. not bringing my baby to Cabo. Like, uh, yeah, exactly. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense until you realize that when Kite Baby works with influencers, primarily what they're asking them to do is exploit their children for the parent to be paid. That's what I was thinking. Of. Like, it so is. it's like, do you have the guaranteed posts of the trip? But it's like you have to use the baby. Yes, one hundred percent. Sounds ethical. It's just a very strange uh, conundrum in general. Having baby influencer trips in itself. Weird, but that's not what we're here to talk about. So Marissa worked for Kite Baby and her like employee, I guess like position was officially named the point of contact and studio coordinator for photo shoots. So that's what she did for Kite Baby. What does that mean to you? You know more about that world than me. I don't have no idea what the fuck that means. Like she just like coordinated photo shoots. Like she would like email them. It sounds like she's like a producer. Yeah, kind of like a production manager. Okay, so actually I'm gonna be using your uh, insight here a little bit because what happened was Marissa and her husband are unable to conceive naturally from what I understand. Understand. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but they're unable to conceive naturally. And so they were looking to adopt children, right? I know. Just stick with me, Lily. <laughs> I was going to say, 
like, where is this going? We will always arrive to our destination in due time. Just trust me. So she had not worked for Kai Baby for a year. She's been working there for under a year, which means she does not qualify for FMLA, which is like a medical leave where she can be paid. And the reason why that's relevant is because since she was looking to adopt, she got the call, and this happens to a lot of adoptive parents, you give them kind of like your specifics if you want a newborn or what kind of situation you're looking to get involved with when adopting. And she got a call recently, and that call was that there was a 22-week-old baby in the NICU. Okay, viability is 24 weeks. The fact that a 22-week-old baby is alive is insanity. Like, seriously, I do not know how that was possible. But it's a very, very traumatizing, medically involved situation and a long road ahead. But they got the call and they said, hey, there's this baby, 22 weeks old. Basically, there is no guarantee he's going to be alive. Do you want to adopt this yeah, baby? Yeah, that seems weird that they would even tell them before it was clear that... Well, because someone needs to take over the medical expenses. They need guardians. So it's like, you are oh. going to be here. And it's not just like the medical expenses. You're going to go and visit that NICU. You're going to be a part of that baby getting better, essentially. Parents are very heavily involved in like the NICU process. So they got that call and they said, yes, we will adopt this baby. So they went immediately and obviously she works for kite baby she has to let them know like this is what's going on the reason why we're talking about this today is because kite baby initially this is initially told her okay cool congrats and all that you get two weeks two weeks okay with your child have fun come back soon i love you she was like kind of freaking out like i'm gonna be here till like march like i need like a maternity leave and they were not willing to grant that and again she did not qualify for fmla yet because it was under a year i didn't know you had to like qualify for oh yeah yeah you don't just get benefits like right off the bat a lot of companies will even have yeah but i thought maternity leave is something that's like that you do no <laughs> i don't know and i'm honestly not sure of the ins and outs of it because she is not the biological mother so that's where we're getting into here that's why it might be where different. Yeah. they treated her very much as like well fuck you you didn't give birth and allegedly yeah. this is all alleged her sister went on a live Okay, and that's why we even know about all of this. Her sister went on live and was spilling more details because Marissa herself has not done this. She has not gone online and like talked about it, but her sister did and her <laughs> sister was pissed. <laughs> and so her sister said that allegedly on a phone call with Kite Baby after they had agreed to the two weeks, they revoked the two weeks and they said, basically, you need to get back to work right now. And if you don't, you will not have a position when you get back. And also, allegedly, this is what they said. We don't know this for sure. There is no proof of this, but this is what the sister's saying that someone on the team said, you're not even giving birth, so why do you need all that time off? And also, in my mind, I'm thinking, they're probably thinking the baby's in the hospital. They're not even in your house. So like, get to work, lady. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. There's so many problems with this, but one of the main things that people are bringing up is, number one, you're a baby company, okay? Yeah, it's a little wild that they don't give a shit about parents. Yeah. What people were bringing up is that on their website in like their careers part of it or whatever, they were like, we value parents and like, we're like a family owned business and we really care about parents. Do you? Do you care about adopted parents though? Yeah, basically everyone just went fucking insane. There were parents that had worked with Kite Baby that were basically like pressured into making statements against Kite Baby and being like, no, like she should have been valued, all this stuff. The good thing that came out of it was that a GoFundMe was pushed. And what's interesting about the GoFundMe is it was created by Marissa, but it's for Judah, who's the baby's name, his medical fund. And nowhere in it is she talking about all of this. Like she doesn't air out anything about Kite Baby. She's just like basically saying, hey, he's really going through it and we're, you know, in need. But she also, I mean, kind of worth noting is that she has been pregnant three times and she's lost all three of those babies. Like she's had a really rough journey to get here. Even if she hadn't had that and she was just an adoptive mother in general, like that is such a shitty thing to do to be like, oh, like you're not birthing her. Like why the fuck do you need to do this? One of the main issues people had is that Marissa requested to work remotely. So that's where I wanted your kind of like insight on. She wanted some accommodations to work remotely. Now, my question to you is, can she work remotely doing that point of contact and studio coordinator for photo shoots? I think so. Yeah? I mean, I, I obviously, it's, I don't work there. I don't know if I can know. But like, I, I mean, like, if it applies to what I'm assuming it would apply to, it would be like, she's making the call sheets. She's ordering catering. <laughs> like, okay. she's like getting, it's like all the logistics behind the shoot. Which, yes, I mean, obviously, it would be better to have them in person. And like, if they're the point of contact, then like, if people are coming for photo shoots, that's right. like, who would greet them? And like, who would show them where to go? And like, 
Yeah, but you usually also would have like PAs. And it wouldn't be impossible or like unfathomable that you would be like, hey, you're gonna be meeting Tiffany when you get there. I hope you have a great time. Like, exactly, it wouldn't be so crazy. Like think how many times you've been to like a branded thing where they're like, okay, call this person when you get there and it's someone you've never met before. I mean, I think, yes, you would not be able to do everything you normally would be able to do, but I feel like if she was willing to do that, then at least you were getting some of the work. So after all of this shit happened, not only did people who have worked with Kite Baby speak up against Kite Baby, but also people who are NICU parents were really upset and they were sharing their like NICU stories and being like, I can't imagine if my employer had done this to me because it really is such a traumatizing experience to see. I mean, like, have you ever seen micro preemie diapers? It is like so heart wrenching. Like it's amazing that they're alive and that's great. But like, this is really, really, really difficult for these parents that are going through it. I think of like any, when you have anyone in the hospital, for any kind of situation, that's like an all encompassing kind of like drain. Like you aren't focusing on like, oh my God, I need to go plan this shoot. I remember like my dad was in the hospital not that long ago, like eight months ago or something like that. And I can't even be there because he's in Miami and just the entire day, like I was just like sitting in my house, just like- It's all you think about. Yeah, it's literally horrible. I can't even imagine that being your child, biological or not. You know, these people have been praying for a kid. They wanted this more than anything in the world. And now it's happening in the most vulnerable and like heart wrenching way. And your employer's like, sorry, can you actually just come to work and like make some cheese plates for us and like just like greet influencers? No bitch. But okay, so what we're gonna watch now is a series of apologies, if you will, because Kite Baby posted an initial apology and then we got one after. So let's watch the first one. Hey guys, it's Ying. I wanted to hop on here to sincerely apologize to Marissa for how her parental leave was communicated and handled in the midst of her incredible journey of adoption and starting a family. I have been trying to reach out to her to apologize directly as well. Kai Baby prides itself in being a family-oriented company. We treat biological and non-biological parents equally. (laughs) Through both my personal and professional experiences, I have the utmost respect for babies, families, and the adoption community. However, such respect and good intentions were not fully communicated to Marissa in the discussion of her parental leave. It was my oversight that she didn't feel supported as we always have intended. Really? As offered to her originally, we would find her a position whenever she decides to return to work. Mm-hmm. I also- I'm watching this for the second time now, but I'm like, so you're saying she's out of a job until she comes back. Literally, it was like, so not the same position? Like, we'll put you somewhere girly, but we're not gonna pay you a dime, okay? You can work at the front desk. I want to apologize to our kite community. I'm surprised you didn't really leave with that. Yeah. 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 Ask the company's <laughs> owner, I will Ooh. always stand behind our values. Mm. I will be reviewing our HR policy. They always review. To make it's sure always going to be a review process. Hurting our exists. staff and our community in the future. Finally, we're truly happy for her adoption <laughs> and wish the best to her and her family. Thank you for your time and for listening. My favorite was that she respects babies. I'm reading this comment under this initial apology and it says, okay, cool, but let's go support Kate Quinn who donated $2,000 to this wonderful mom. And that brings this whole other conundrum where all other bamboo companies were donating to Marissa Hughes. And I felt like that was like the weirdest element of all of this. Cause I'm like, not all of you just like trying to profit off of this, like one moment of Kite Baby. Like other baby brands? Other like baby Kate bamboo baby brands. Brand? The ones that make the bamboo clothes. <sighs> not the baby bamboo battle. I doubt Marissa cares. She's probably like, 100%. yes, bamboo. No, hundred percent. But like this one right here, Pebble Hill, a thousand dollars that's one company willow innovations that's another one i think salty and peewee is one as well i'm surprised they aren't throwing in job offers in these companies. i know look at this one coast Coal bamboo congrats on sweet baby judah like it's weird like i felt like that was a little dystopian in all of this i'm glad she got the money but like guys can you just like anonymously donate if you're really trying to be like you know what i mean i don't know but very quickly in the same night that that first apology was posted you know swiftly after she got actually reamed in the comments she posted this oh okay i'm gonna do this so i just posted a official apology on tiktok and the comments were right it was scripted (laughs) <laughs> I memorized it. I I just basically just read it. It wasn't sincere. And I've decided to go off script and just tell you exactly what happened. Oh, no. I've been thinking about what went wrong. And I think sincerely what went wrong was how 
we treated Marissa. Yeah, no shit. The one that made the decision to veto her request to go remote um, while she has to stay in NICU to take care of her adopted uh, baby. And when I think back, this was a terrible decision. I was insensitive, selfish, and was only focused on the fact that her job was um, had always been done on site and I did not see the possibility of doing it remotely. However, having a little bit of sensitivity, understanding and flexibility would have accommodated her, but I did not accommodate her. her. So it, I cannot imagine who, the stress she had to go through, not having the option to go back to work and having to deal with a newborn in um, in NICU. So thinking back, it really was a terrible mistake. I own 100% of that. I know people are gonna say, well, now that it's backslashed and, and you're just saving, you know, phase or saving the company. I think all of it is true, <laughs> but at, at the end of the day, Shut the fuck up! Oh my god, what do you mean? Go back on script, girl! They never girl. say this part like, out loud. You're like, oh shit! Yeah, All right. yeah, no, she's <laughs> screaming the quiet parts out loud. At the end of the day, as human beings, as a mom, as a, a female um, owner of the business, and especially a baby business, I feel like I need to set the straight, the record straight, that I fully realize the um, impact of my action, my decision, my short-sightedness, um, that I did not accommodate Marissa fully and did not even reach out to her personally, didn't even talk to her at all. Girl, please, um, just, try, just to stop press her. pause stop on this. Talking. Today. And I really want to apologize to her and to the community. And I would really want to take this opportunity to say that I'm sorry and I would, you know, rethink about the whole thing. And I'm going to guess she doesn't want to work there anymore. You, our company's oh God, HR policy uh, and procedures, I would like to make absolutely possible changes. And in fact, I think a lot of comments are right. We need to set the example because we are in the baby business. I want to be... Yeah, um, in fact, yes. Above <laughs> and beyond in protecting women and giving them the right um, protection and benefits when they're having babies. So give me some time. I'm going to go through the, the policies. No, and, and <laughs> she has to review them. HR um, stuff and just come up with a, a better policy for all our employees. And as for Marissa, she's a fantastic woman. She has the biggest heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've said multiple times to multiple people, including her family, that I love her as a, a worker. I enjoy <laughs> working with her every day. Mm. She's one of the few people that I actually see every day on site. She shot herself in the foot I with think that, that would, one. Um, allow her a little extra consideration and, um, you know, She literally but just no. stuck her foot so far deep in her mouth when she was just like, I saw her every day. Like, we had a great relationship, so you should have reached out to her. And you yet went behind her back, made this decision, made other people relay it to her. The most snake shit a uh, fucking owner can do. But uh, she keeps going. I just really want to apologize to her, to her again that for the feelings and the hurt, and, and the damages that I have done. Mm -hmm. And um, we will continue to pay you the um, the benefits as well as the um, remote position that you have requested. <laughs> I understand if you don't want to come back to work um, anymore, but we'll <laughs> to pay you as if you were uh, working remotely for us for those hours that you proposed um, until you're ready to come back. And your position, your original position is always open for you when you come back. So what I gathered from that is you had the money and resources to always pay her to do this remotely, so much so that now you're gonna do it even if she doesn't do the work. <laughs> She's literally just like, even if you don't wanna come back to work, we're paying you for the proposed amount of time, which I think she said was so March. She's just gonna get a check. Like, it's just like, girl, so you mean you could have done this easily? Well, I mean, they're saving money because she clearly didn't hire a PR person. <laughs> Dude, this is still up to. And when I say, like, the comments, like, nobody accepted this. Everybody was like, absolutely not. It's the sheer panic for me. Yeah, literally everyone was commenting on how panicked she was. I was talking about this last night to my friends on Fortnite. And I said, you know what's crazy about good old USA? Is, like, even a small business, this was built from the ground up by her. This was something she's worked so fucking hard on. Even the smallest of businesses. When you give them a little taste of the corporate world and you start having your employees have benefits and you are trying to pay them a livable wage, you 
you become a corporation really quickly in the sense that you don't give a fuck about your employees if they can't serve you in the exact way that you need them to serve you. And again, she's, she wasn't asking not to work at all. She knew that she didn't qualify for FMLA. Like she wasn't saying, hey, pay me maternity leave that I do not qualify for. That is not what she was requesting. She was requesting, can I have accommodations? Because this was a life changing event. And you're a baby company. And I just had a fucking <laughs> my baby company. And when she goes like, in fact, I think as a baby company, we should probably, yeah, bitch, you probably should, but it's a little late now because it's clear that you don't subscribe to the values that you advertise. Honestly, I don't envy any business owner. Like if we ever get to the point where we have like multiple employees and we have to like give benefits and stuff, I am scared for that day because I just think it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of stuff. That's I'm so not naughty on my brain because I'm like, oh no, too hard. We would just like pay people too much. Well, no. Oh, that's the thing it's like we should pay people too much and we should pay people a livable fucking wage and I honestly I've always been the type of person like if I'm getting paid this salary and someone working for me gets literally nothing like I've always been of the idea that like if I'm making more then we need to adjust you to start meeting me somewhere even if it's the same work you were doing before I don't understand people like this that if she had the money nowhere in this did she say I didn't have the ability to pay her on maternity leave that she didn't qualify for. I mean, it's a very large company, you said. So like- Very. It's one of the most popular. And again, they have plenty of money to pay influencers to not only go to Aspen, all expenses paid with their families, but oh, yeah, the to baby do yeah. these actual like influencer posts. They sponsor posts on TikTok. They have a ton of influencers who work with them. I follow one person who had to do like a whole statement and stuff because she is affiliated with Kite Baby. And like, they're a huge company. This is not, I mean, maybe not huge. They're not Amazon, but like they are a very, very no, but big also, company. What's her salary? Way more than Marissa's. I'll tell you that. Right? Like, I mean, even if you don't have a soul, it would have been a great PR move to like, we will pay for your NICU mm -hmm. situation. Like that would have done you a lot better than this would have. For sure. But I mean, all in all, nobody wants to uh, get involved with Kite Baby right now. Everyone's kind of like staying far away. Oh, Mama Ta commented on this. I didn't see that. She commented on the last one too. Oh, oh my God. She said, NICU mom here. Those days were extremely hard. The fact Marissa was still trying to do her job while being at the NICU is hard enough. I agree with that. Like the fact that she even was willing to do that is insane. Cause imagine you're like fucking dealing with that, going every day to visit your baby and you're in the NICU with your fucking laptop trying to like work for Kai baby. It just feels so dystopian. She says, support moms, all moms and dads. They are your brand ambassadors. I mean, just the sheer irony of it being a baby company. I, well, that's the craziest part. And then her saying, I respect babies. What the fuck does that mean? I know. And honestly, I hate to say it, but that's really why this gained the traction that it did because oh, no, I think sure. that people are used to corporations like neglecting parents. And I remember when my brother told me that his company gave him paternity leave, like I was in shock. I was like, whoa, they have that? Like, I didn't even know they had that because we are so used to getting crumbs, especially in our country. I yeah. don't know about other countries. I've heard it's better. But like in our country, it's fucking shit. Well, and especially when it's a company that started as a, like a small company, it wasn't always like this huge thing. Like you would think that they would have a little empathy and compassion. Yeah, and I feel like if you're growing, only build that company to the point that you're able to sustain it in a way that values everybody. Like, why are you gonna become this fucking corporation that is the epitome of what everybody hates? If you wanna be a true example and hire moms and like, like I've seen businesses that like allow you to bring your kids and they have like good childcare yeah. and they I've heard it's like really good working for Dollywood with like Dolly Parton and they have like childcare and oh, benefits and they be. pay you like your school. Like I just feel like there is so much evidence that shows that employees that are happy and that have a good working environment and that feel valued are going to do better work just because they feel valued. Exactly. They'll go above and beyond and do more work than they would have been expected to originally. It just makes you wonder also like did she ever have the values or was she just always in it to make money? No, I think you become that way. And as soon as you have a certain amount of money, it's kind of harder to relate to people. You're just like, well, I mean, I don't know. I'm just like a business owner doing my thing. I got to look out for my business. Like, it's just that like grinding mindset. Well, yeah, and they get caught up in like all of the logistics and all the moving pieces. And it's like, I get that that would be overwhelming, but not this overwhelming. And oh my God. She fucked up. I feel like at this point too, seeing everything we've seen over the past year, and I don't even know what of this podcast, is that this apology would have never happened 
if the public didn't get upset. That's always what it is. Like, this is such a safe face bullshit that. apology. Yeah, she literally said that. That's always what's the most unfortunate part of stories like this, where it's just like, okay, great for Marissa. I am glad that she not only way surpassed her goal on GoFundMe, which awesome. Yeah, like, honestly, it did end up probably working out for the better because now she can take that time off. But the audacity to be like, your job's waiting for you. Bitch, do you think she wants to come work for you now? Yeah, I just feel like the fact that you had to get to this point to be honest with your customers, with your employees, like it's just such a bad look. And um, I guess people are not really accepting this. Now, what we have to wait and see is if people actually stop buying Kite Baby and what they do about that. But you know how the internet is, they they do be forgetting. But anyway, that is uh, pretty much it. That's uh, where we're at currently. I don't know if she's gonna get into another Panic Tonight and post, but if she I'm does, not gonna lie, I, I would enjoy a third one. <laughs> it was so unhinged. I can't believe everybody in her company did not email her like, take this down please oh my god talk about damage control but you did not control the damage ma'am so two things we were gonna just finish that topic because i thought that was it but number one i found an update and number two we had to take a brief intermission so we're back if we look a little different that's why while we were on our brief intermission i came across this tiktok on my for you page and it is of marissa i guess she like made a tiktok or something i don't know where this came damn from damn it I, I really hoped it was gonna be the lady again oh no we're not that lucky Hey everyone, I just wanted to come on here and thank each and every person who has loved and supported us so much over these last few days. Above all else, thank you so much for covering Judah in prayer. It is the biggest blessing to us and to know that so many people are pleading with the Lord on his behalf and waiting for the Lord to provide a miracle is just such an encouragement to us as his parents. Um, we've also received a lot of love and support on our GoFundMe and that is just such a blessing as well while we stay away from home for so many months and cover a level four NICU stay. Um, we did acknowledge the apology that was put out on social media and while we don't think it would be appropriate for me to go back, we're really encouraged to hear that there will be some changes made for current and future employees at the company. And we just pray that all works out and that those changes are made um, for everyone that works really hard to keep that company up and running. So thank you again so much. We are just in awe of your generosity and your willingness to love on our baby the way we do love the shade. It was a little too polite for my taste. It was like, girl, just let it out. Oh no, I would have fucking reamed her. She does seem very nice. I just, obviously she's frustrated and I feel personally like her sister coming on to live was like probably co-signed by her. Oh, I don't yeah, think I her sister just went we out. Like, you know, I feel like she's more frustrated than she's letting on, but that's her prerogative. She doesn't have to come on here and like make a big fucking thing. As we said earlier, she probably is not upset by the situation now because she got way more than she was right. probably ever making at the company. Honestly, I I mean, yeah, I'm sure she's feeling a lot less scared now that so many people have come out to support her. For sure. And, um, you know, I love that for her. I think that she definitely deserved that time off and hopefully now she gets it. But that's basically where we're at. That is, as of right now, the most updated we could possibly get with this topic, but you know how it goes. So we're going to move on to our third and final topic. This has been, I mean, not the Kite Baby one so much, but the other topic of Bretman Rock is similar to this, not in that they're talking about similar things, but like, it's just so flabbergasting what influencers are getting on podcasts and saying. I'm just like, why? In this case, I was like, hmm? By the way, we're talking about a girl that um, faked that she had sickle cell anemia. Well, it's not just a girl. So if you've been around in the beauty community, Lily, obviously, you know, she doesn't really like fuck with the beauty community like that. But Daisy Marquez is someone that's been around for a hot minute in the beauty world. The name sounds a little familiar. And I never really followed her. Honestly, she was not ever like my particular cup of tea, but she had a lot of subscribers. She still does. And I saw this clip of her going around, of her on a podcast, talking to Bramty. If you don't know who Bramty is, Bramty is the mom of the, what is their name of their family thing? They're like a family TikTok channel, the Bram fam, or I don't know what the fuck. I know that name too, but I don't know who it is. But Bramty, like everything I've ever seen of her, problematic family vlogger type. For sure. Oh, got so it. that's who she's doing this with. And that's who's like asking her real and honest questions. But basically what happened was Daisy Marquez put out a video a long time ago that's since been deleted, but we do have it, where she was talking about why she had been MIA from social media for a while. And what's crazy about this video is that she doesn't just say like, hey, I wasn't feeling well. No, the details are insane. No, like she literally goes into like what sickle cell anemia is and how it like affects your body and this, that, and the other 
and all these details. She very much committed to the bit. And it turns out she's lying. So just know that when we're watching her explain all of this. Well, and also she doesn't just even give details about like the sickness itself. She also gives details of like how she dealt with it and like how like it affected her mentally and like all this stuff and listening to it, knowing she's full of shit. It's like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, the, she honestly goes on forever. So we're not gonna watch the whole thing, but it's kind of crazy looking back right now. Confused, like what does she have to tell us? But I am just here to tell you guys what has been going on in my life for the past two weeks. Um, a lot of you guys noticed that I was being a little bit MIA on social media. I was still uploading and stuff, but I just wasn't being active. I wasn't like tweeting like I always do or Snapchatting and all that stuff. God forbid. Literally. So I just wanted to let you guys know we'll get to what that. has been going on. So I'm just gonna go straight into the story. So pretty much what happened was that in the beginning of the year, obviously it's still the beginning of the year, but in the beginning of January, I went for my physical checkup and she goes on to say that basically she's always described herself as anemic, that she is anemic. And then she got uh -huh. this like routine blood work. And in that blood work, something was found. And that's when she found out that she had sickle cell anemia. And she goes on to explain it. And she also says like she always used to try and donate blood, but they wouldn't let her. Which is true for anemia, anemic, I think. Supposedly. I mean, is she even actually anemic? Well, that I don't know. I don't believe a sh fucking word she says now, yeah. but yeah. Red blood cells contain protein, which is hemoglobin and when the hemoglobin doesn't get to a specific area of your well, body, it obviously flashcards. affects it. So with my um, red blood cells being little crescents and then them clogging up that specific area, it, it prevents from the oxygen to go through my body. So that's where that came from because they were like, your hemoglobin levels are really low. You're not getting enough oxygen throughout your body. And it, it explained a lot. The doctor explained to me that there are two kinds of sickle cell anemia, that there is sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait. The difference being- I'm telling you, she had flashcards. She literally is, yeah, she studied for the test and she's just she's reciting everything. She's giving a fucking presentation. It makes me so uncomfortable. I don't know how you could lie like this. So this happened in 2018, I believe was the year. And Daisy goes on to explain it. We're gonna watch her explain it right now, but we need to just like, talk about it flat out because it is insane. The reason why she sat down and said, you guys haven't seen me for two weeks, which like, okay, like nobody's seen me in like two years on right? my main I was channel. Like, we never uploaded. I honestly, maybe it's just me because I'm not someone that on my main channel specifically was ever consistent. I could kind of relate now in the sense that like, if we just stopped for two weeks, like people would be like, what the fuck happened? Like if we were actually, well, you know, missing. But also people were gonna eventually realize what she was covering up. So. I'm like, I don't understand why you would not just tell them. But the reason why she faked having sickle cell anemia, which from what I understand, and I don't understand a lot, even though she just went on and on about whatever that was, but it seems to be a very debilitating condition. Everyone that has it that's yeah. commented on this has been like, this is no fucking joke. Nobody would want to go through this. This is not a life It's thing. not like she's saying she had mono. No, or any like temporary illness like that. The reason why she said she had that is because she was actually getting a BBL. A Brazilian butt lift. A Brazilian butt lift, for those of you who don't know what a BBL is. I think everyone does Which, at this point. Which, I repeat, is something that is not like no one would notice. Like, you, you can tell when someone's gotten a BBL. Back then, maybe people would have been harsher on her because of it, but it was also a time where Kim Kardashian, like, was saying, I've never gotten anything done to my butt. And you know what I mean? Like there was plenty of celebrities and shit who lie about that same thing. I don't know how or when that started or who's responsible for that, but so many people have lied about getting surgery done. Like Kylie Jenner, how long did she try to say her lips were not injected? It's this weird phenomenon that was happening around that time. So do I understand that she wouldn't want to tell her audience about her Brazilian butt lift? Absolutely, I understand why she wouldn't want to. And yeah, maybe they would have noticed that her ass got super fat all of a sudden and it's like, oh my God, slay queen. But like, if you were that set on hiding it though, I'm not saying she had to come broadcast and be like, that is why I'm not. Say you had the fucking flu. That's Why the thing. would you go with like a chronic illness that's like a serious thing that people are gonna be like really feeling bad? Like, I can't even imagine the amount of sympathy this girl received because people thought that she'd like just been diagnosed with this actually serious condition when she literally just got plastic surgery. Well, so in this podcast that this all came to light, in, even though people have speculated for a long time, she talks about that. This is something that keeps getting brought up and people have speculated that like, hey, what the fuck happened to your sickle cell anemia, girly? Like, you know what I mean? Like things like that. It's followed her. People aren't stupid. Some people connected the dots. Well, because a lot of the time, especially with chronic illnesses, influencers that have chronic illnesses will often like garner audiences that also have chronic illnesses because it's like someone they can relate to. And I'm sure she had people that were like genuinely feeling bad for her and like, 
trying to keep up with like that part of her life because they related to it. And then they were like, hmm, she seems fine. Yeah, maybe that's it. But it definitely was following her around. So she uses this podcast with Bramty as her one opportunity to explain everything. This and this is what she has to say. So in 2018, I got a BBL. Wait, is this your first time admitting it? Yes. It's my first time addressing it. I never denied it. I just never addressed it. So you never said you did. <laughs> I just said I had a serious yeah. but you're illness instead. Saying on here, like, yes, you... I got a BBO in 2018. Okay. And this is exactly how everything went down. So I got the surgery. And obviously, like, for the people that have gotten surgery, they ask you questions beforehand, like, about your health and stuff. And mm -hmm. I remember them asking, you know, are you anemic? And I said, yes, I have always been anemic. My Allegedly. entire life growing up, I had always tried to donate blood, like in the blood drives. And every time they would tell me like, no, you're not a candidate. They would even give you like the little brochures. They would have like frijoles and stuff like that, like foods to eat <laughs> And that's iron. true. That's very yeah, true. Yeah, and so. They won't take your blood if yeah, your you, iron is Yeah, low. and so I just remember being like, oh my God, like this is so annoying. Like I've always wanted to, you know, help out, whatever. So <sighs> I remember they asked me if you're anemic. And I was like, yes. And they're like, okay, usually with patients who are anemic, you know, we'll keep you, we'll monitor you afterwards just to make sure because some patients lose a lot of blood some don't okay. like blah blah just to make sure that you're just good. like safety procedures yeah. before the surgery and so i was like yeah yeah whatever when i tell you i did not think about how difficult the aftermath was going to be i went into it so naively like just thinking like oh it's a whatever surgery. you're gonna come out with like it was my first surgery ever by the way oh, it shit. was my first surgery ever and I was so young and I was just so naive that I didn't even think about the aftermath. Okay, so the reason why she starts talking about like, oopsie, it's hard after? I didn't know. Is because she didn't pre-film anything. Exactly. She did not prepare any content, <gasps> gasp, for after, which is insane. The fact that she had no clue what the aftercare would be is like the weirdest shit ever. Well, and the fact that she's then going to turn around and have it be something that it's so catastrophic that she doesn't have content, that she's willing to fake this. It is absurd that she didn't look into it beforehand and be like, hmm, what's the healing like? Right, so she starts explaining the moments that she started panicking and realizing like, oh my God, I don't have content, oh no. After it had been two to three days. Right, God forbid. The third day is like when I was finally coming back to life and and I remember looking at my DMs and like messages people being like, how oh, like, where are you? Where have you been? Like I hadn't posted on social media for In those three days, three days and, and then I go into full panic mode. I'm like, holy <gasps> fuck. Mm -hmm. I cannot even get up or sit down to use the restroom. I can't like do anything. And then I start freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, like what am I going to tell my fans? Like I had no content pre film. Like I go into full panic mode and I remember at the time it was just my mom and my ex there with me and they didn't know what to do and I was just kind of like in a frenzy and I'm like oh I'm just gonna say that I had sickle cell because but let me ask literally you. what the reason why she got that uh brilliant idea is actually quite interesting it's because the nurse apparently in passing when discussing her anemia and her blood tests and results and stuff she was like oh this number I think it was her red blood count was like high or low or one of those numbers and she was like oh really and she's like yeah you have anemia you know, it's probably sickle cell anemia. That's what she says the nurse said to her. I don't buy that for a second. No, nurses don't casually diagnose you with like, oh my God. I literally three days. Are you joking? This isn't like I was in a coma for two months and I had to cover it up. Even then, don't say you have sickle cell anemia, but like, what the fuck are you talking about? The way that this just fills me with just like rage and confusion and disgust. I'm like, who? does that i don't know part of me is like okay good she's telling everyone eventually like she finally said it because she has been lying all these years there's like a small not even a cookie it's like a small ribbon it's fallen on the floor you can have that but i don't feel like she's being entirely truthful that's my opinion i don't feel like this is how this came to be i really hope this is the truth and she's being super vulnerable and this is how it all came to light and she really didn't understand the magnitude of what lying about a chronic condition like sickle cell anemia like she didn't understand what that meant but i just i don't buy then it don't use that as the illness you're choosing to fake. I have no sympathy for this situation. No, I have it's no fucked. sympathy. I just think I'm like, I hope she was just as dumb as she's explaining. She was, and that's why she did it versus the people that are like lying about cancer and trying to profit off of it. And you know, like that kind of maliciousness that comes with it. I think they're both 
fucked and horrible and it's just a really shitty situation all around. This is the back and forth my brain goes to though because it's like part of me believes that but then I'm like, but you got your flashcards out for the fucking speech you gave everyone on sickle cell anemia and how serious it is and how much it fucking sucks. But you don't, you didn't have it. So you did understand. Maybe she like said it and then was like, oh shit, I really gotta dial it up. And then she like fucking studied. Which actually, should we Google it really fast and see what it says? Sure. It's a uh, sickle cell disease. Oh, it's a disease. Okay. A group of disorders that cause red blood cells to become misshapen and break down. I wouldn't be surprised if she thought it was just like a branch of anemia. <laughs> Like in the beginning, Truly. where she's like, well, I have anemia. Truly. Sickle cell sounds like fancy. And I don't, I'm not trying to give her an out. I'm trying to understand what the fuck led to this. Right? Because like, how could you think this yeah. is okay? Uh, symptoms. Requires medical diagnosis. Infections, pain, and fatigue are symptoms of sickle cell disease. I believe that she probably read something like that and was like, perfect. Well, she sounds actually great. explains a little bit more of how she thought that sickle cell anemia was like a cold or flu. But let me ask you a question. So when the nurse told you like, oh, you probably have sickle cell. Like, mm -hmm. how, how was her expression telling you? Was she, like, worried? Was it just no, like, oh, it was you have just, sickle cell? Like, no, she was like, oh, you probably have sickle cell. Like, just, like, she, bluntly She just like said that? it, like, just so, like, like, like nonchalantly. Nothing. Okay. So whenever I thought, like, oh, I just have sickle cell, I... You know when you, like, go... Like, when you have symptoms and you go on Google and you, like, self-diagnose like, yourself? you the first thing, yeah. Okay, so I... My dumbass, my stupid dumbass, really thought that, like, it was, like, a cold and you get, like, a flu. Okay. That's what I... Uh, she goes on a little bit more to explain why she lied. Mentally, I was super weak. I was super weak. Everybody around me knew that, like, any little hate or any little comment would get to me and I would cry and I would so just, like... So the solution was to fake Mentally, it I was just super, super vulnerable. So mm -hmm. I knew that if I told the Brand internet... In 2018, when BBLs were not even a thing, oh, yeah. if I were to come out right now that I had BBL... It, nobody it, would give a shit. Oh, yeah, right now everybody would Nobody would you. give a fuck. But in 2018, I, everything's fresh. If I were to come out with the, that I got a BBL and that's my first surgery, I would have gotten dragged through the mud. Oh, yeah. And mentally, I just was not prepared for that. I was not ready for that. I knew that, like... You were scared because you were I was already getting terrified. Hit. I was terrified of the internet. I was terrified of, like, explaining myself. I was terrified. I was honestly and genuinely just a terrified person that is why i lied i lied because i was scared and i fucked up so i sat down and i made a youtube video and i lied and i said that i had sickle so and that's why i was gone off the internet when honestly i could have just been like hey guys i wasn't feeling good you know um i was off the internet and that's yeah. it but back then like i said i was such a people pleaser and i felt yeah. the need to explain <laughs> absolutely everything in my life yeah that i felt the need to just sit down and make a whole video about it mm -hmm. i really like could have gone off the internet and not even said a word but no, i made yeah. that video and once i posted it and i read the comments i realized that i fucked up really bad and but you did you did realize that i realized like that right away it's not right away like years later like no no no, no, no. right away i realized and i was like fuck 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 i was like what did i do what did i do and six I years remember ago being like if i delete the video right away like it's gonna seem so suspicious so i was like fuck like I once again I fucked up and then I was like I'm gonna keep it up for a little bit and then I'm gonna delete it and I deleted it right away which is like why it's not even on the internet because I realized ah, and then I deleted it we have and it. whatever <laughs> and then I don't remember how much time went by like months went by and no and everybody forgot about it everybody forgot about it I was like okay like you know like I in the back of mind I'm like okay like I got away with that lie but then I felt guilty and I was like fuck like I feel bad for like you know that I lied to my fans and to the fans and to the people that actually watched that video and believe my lie, I am genuinely, genuinely sorry, sorry from the bottom of my heart. Um, you know, I wish I could take it back, but also like that mistake really has changed me and for the better. Mm -hmm. I have learned so much and I've grown from that mistake and it took me a long time to apologize to myself especially Are you, is this a joke <laughs> like i feel like this is like a satire. i'm sorry to like, myself uh, okay, for giving myself sickle cell anemia that was really hard on me <laughs> wait a second i didn't really have it i forgave myself already <laughs> I just don't know how she thought this was gonna go. Like literally this video is still up, this podcast episode. I don't even know if this is a podcast episode, is it? They just have microphones, I'm confused. But the comments are off. Shut up. They are, they're off right now. Well, I mean, she doesn't like hate, so. That comment is mind blowing Girl. to me. Then get off the fucking internet. I literally was like, gonna say, just what put you your mean? phone down. Like you do not need to keep posting how old if is it was she? affecting you. I don't know, I have no idea. She has to be, oh my God, she's young. Seven years younger than me, so she's 20. 26 right now so she was 20 at the time so if you are 20 and she is so paralyzed by this hate on the internet maybe pursue a different career 
Like, I get that that's not like, oh yeah, like I'm just gonna leave all my followers. But like, I don't think that she was so paralyzed by hate that she was then willing to fake a disease that eventually you had to like have some kind of inkling that like maybe it would come out eventually. Well, maybe because she thinks that it's not on the internet, which it is again, like we just watched. She maybe thinks that you cannot go back and cross reference just how elaborate that lie was. She did not just get on camera and say, I have sickle cell anemia. She gave you like bullet points. These are the symptoms. This is how I knew I had it. Like everything. She says she lost her hair from stress. No. Oh yeah, that was a tweet. I saw a clip of her saying it and that she used to like hit herself because it was painful and that would like, it was like the craziest shit ever. This wasn't a little lie. I don't know how you can make up so many levels to this lie just to cover something up that you're embarrassed by. Like it's absurd. I definitely would have given her a lot more grace had it not been as elaborate as it was. For as sure. As insane as it was. Like girl, it was once or twice you went on with this lie whether it was because you realized you fucked up or not you needed to sit down if you really wanted to sit down and address this and be like I lost it like I just went way too far I got caught in it I had no idea what the fuck to do anymore not just like I realized right away and then that was it no that it's wasn't like, it. clearly like, you, you went on for a while because then you literally like got fucking flashcards ready and really studied the disease so you could sell it more because you didn't want to get it caught. across multiple platforms she yeah. was on Twitter telling people it's my sickle cell anemia acting up again no like Girl, if you want to be honest, then just be honest. And Bramty, of all people, being here, being like, I'm going to ask you the real questions. Oh, Girl, you, you question were getting a lot asked? of hate on the internet. Girl, Jessie can speak from experience. Got She's gotten a lot of hate on the internet. <laughs> and I don't think she was faking a disease that you die at age 45. No, and I was literally like crippled by my own anxiety and the weight every morning. And I just didn't go on the internet. Like, it's literally just like, don't post. Yeah, okay, maybe easier said than done for someone who didn't post at all at that time anyway. But even if it was us now, it would be something as easy as like, hey, we're not doing okay. Like our mental health is not all right. And we need time. We need a break. Really? Like it is what it is. I mean, I have friends that have been beauty gurus or something for a long time. And honestly, everyone was always scrutinized in that world. Like it was a very hard kind of community to be a part of. Just the like, I have a theory that it's like the vainness. I don't know if that's a word, but like the, the vanity beauty. behind yeah. the beauty world. It makes the audiences a, a tad bit more fickle and a little bit more judgy sometimes. It's almost like when you get into a relationship with a guy and it's like how you get them is how you keep them or whatever the fuck the saying is well, but then I think that's the same with beauty influencers that's then why she faked this because she was getting a surgery for vanity that then she didn't want to let people know mm -hmm. she was getting I don't know what time in 2018 she was existing in but I don't think there's ever a time to say you have sickle cell anemia when you don't that is the most random crazy bat shit thing I've ever heard. Even if you were gonna claim like, I didn't realize the gravity and like how it's disrespectful to other people that have chronic illnesses, including sickle cell disease. Who yeah. does that? She lied about so many things and it was just like one lie after another to sell it more because she didn't want to get caught. That is a problem. Yeah, that's pretty much all we know right now. It's just crazy. I don't know what else to say. It's like, why are you talking I, right now into I this know. microphone? I'll sprinkle so in confused. also, cause I feel like we didn't watch that much of it. I'll sprinkle in some of the other clips that I had found. It just like blew my mind. People started tagging me in it this week. And I was like, what do you mean? She, what, what did she fake? And then the more clips I watched, I was like, ha. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's not like she's saying here, like it's not a big deal, but she's kind of a little blase about it for my taste. I would it's be definitely not sobbing. the tell all that is warranted with this kind of level of lying to the internet. Yeah, and Brampty's like basically being her like, yes man being like, well, you were getting a lot of hate, so I, I get it. Yeah, they just look like they're like at a sleepover, just like they're chilling wearing and talking about that one time. Yeah, it's, ugh, everything about it is so weird. Um, Well, that's it for that topic and it's, Sad. I'm sorry, guys, but my daughter, it's late at night and my daughter is screaming for me. So I got to go. Um, so we don't have time for our We Love the Internet segment. That is all we have for you today. If you made it to the end, we thank you so much. You know, as always, don't pretend you have sickle cell anemia if you don't. Just a fun word of advice. That's what we always That's say the here lesson on the show. Today. But yeah, I hope you guys had a good weekend and a great rest of your week. And we will see you on Friday. Bye. Bye.